Okay, in this video, what I wanted to show you then was the gamma ray sources you'll be using as you do these uh, simulation experiments. So if I zoom in a bit, what you would be sort of issued if you were doing this in the lab would be a little plastic box like this that's sort of appropriately labeled. And if you open the box up, then what's inside the box are these little disks here. So these little disks here are the gamma ray emitters. Now these aren't uh, very so-called hot sources, they're not very intense at all. In fact, I believe these sources are even unlicensed, meaning that if you sort of look around on the internet in sort of some reputable places, you can actually buy these sources for home hobbyists and experimental things like that. So they're, again, they're not very strong, but what we have here, we're lucky to have is a nice variety of sources because each gamma ray is going to emit a different energy, a gamma ray source is going to emit gamma ray at a different energy, and that allows us to really examine the throughput and say even calibrate our simulation experiment here. So, for instance, if I just pick this little disc up here, this is cobalt-60. The other disc right here, that's sodium-22. There's barium-133. There's cesium-137. Cesium-137 is one of my personal favorites. It's a very standard, recognizable source for this. Here's another kit right here that has, has the cesium-137, cobalt-60 again, barium-133, and it has a manganese-54 in it as well. So these discs here are just sort of what you would put near the detector to perform your... Um, simulation experiment. Um, lastly, we have a couple sources in these plastic bags here, and these are actually americium-241, very useful source for sort of a low-energy gamma ray source. And these are actually very hard to find, and so what we've done here is we've actually taken these out of old smoke detectors. It turned out smoke detectors that you may even have in your house right now used to operate on americium-241. There's an alpha particle that comes out that would uh, charge up smoke particles and cause a little current fluctuation to happen that could set the alarm off in a smoke detector. So that's where we got those because they're getting a little bit hard to find. I'm not exactly sure why. And so just to convince you then that these are all actually radioactive is what I can do then is suppose I take maybe the cesium-137 disc out and just set it there by itself. And then what I have here is sort of an audio, an audio Geiger counter, just sort of a meter there when I turn it on will click whenever it's near a radioactive source. So let's just listen to it just for a second. You know, it's clicking a little bit because there's always background radiation, but if I take it near this disc here, you can see it really starts to tick. And you can read the number off the top of right there, something like about 0.5 millirems per hour. Okay, that's for the cesium-137. And I can also put it over the americium-241. I also get some good ticking over there to the tune of something like about 0.15 millirems per hour. So indeed, these are radioactive sources. You know, they just clearly, the Geiger counter ticks when I'm near the source and sort of backs off when I'm not near the source. And so they are emitting gamma rays, which are being picked up by this detector right here, sort of in a coarse way. We're not really doing any experiments or anything just with a Geiger tube. That is definitely just the presence or the go-no-go no -go of gamma rays. And of course, if I hold the detector over the whole plastic thing, it just goes crazy like that. And there you go. So they are actually sources. Gamma rays are coming out as verified with this. So we often have this around in the lab for safety or if we ever have any question about something that's radioactive or not, or something, maybe the source is under a sheet of paper and we can't find it, I don't know, something like that. This little handheld guide tube is very useful in that regard. So those are the sources that we'll be using. So as we get going on the experiments then, what we'll just sort of do is we'll back up here to the detector. And we need to place, the, of course, the source near the detector. So if I just sort of grab the cesium-137 out of the box here, I would just place it right on top of the detector like that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the cesium is just like right up here and then we would just go with our experiment. So anyway, that's what the source looked like. That's how we'd be using them. And uh, next video, I will turn everything on in the experiment here and show you what the core signal looks like.